and so uh, we can now apply in this video after we learned the uh, rest apis and the fetch uh, on the front end uh, we can try to uh, develop uh, our, the, our application that we wanted uh, and we shown uh, in, the, in the in the slides at the beginning of the next uh, exercise uh, of the previous exercise and uh, what we want to do now actually is to uh, fill this uh, application where in the first part uh, there's a table here that we want to fill with the with the exams that we already gave and uh, the second form should be a form that will only appear when we click on the add button and uh, uh, where we can uh, add the information about the details about the courses and the date uh, where we can actually add a new uh, a new exam to, to the list of our uh, previous exams right uh, so this, uh, uh, what we are seeing here right now, uh, is just uh, pure HTML. Hmm? So I, I spared <laughs> ourselves the time uh, for developing the HTML page. And so let's remember what we did. Uh, we had uh, the, uh, what is that here? Okay. Uh, we had the server that we developed together uh, last week. Uh, that was uh, basically uh, serving uh, API calls mm -hmm. but in addition to that uh, we also had the definition uh, let me maybe just zoom full screen on the editor we had the definition of a st static path here so we are uh, we defined that uh, all the uh, content uh, could also be uh, taken statically from the client directory so whenever we are uh, asking for some of these uh, URLs uh, where we defined uh, some uh, uh, methods, uh, some, some routes, of course, uh, they will be dealt uh, by the dynamic procedures, in particular these uh, API calls. On the other hand, uh, everything that is published in the client directory uh, is uh, served statically. And for instance, I already uh, initialized uh, some uh, index.html a file uh, which is basically uh, empty uh, or at, at least it has some uh, uh, code for uh, displaying this part uh, so let's maybe just quickly through glance through it uh, we have some uh, uh, links for loading uh, uh, bootstrap so nothing special i'm including a main.js which still has to be uh, developed uh, the only um, uh, special part is that uh, this main will be loaded as a, as a module and not as a script so that it can itself import other modules and so on so remember that type equal to module is the way of loading uh, modules in the in the es6 standard so in the um, in the browser in the modern browsers and uh, uh, we, you don't need to load all the files but only the main one and then the main one can import the others hmm? uh, type equal to module uh, by the way forces the strict mod onto the file Okay, and then we have a very pretty straightforward table uh, page with a container. This is just the the, um, the, git, the bootstrap container. Uh, I have an ID for a div for putting error messages. So if we have some error message to show, I can put it here. Uh, maybe with some CSS, it will become red or something like that. Uh, it's just an empty placeholder. So uh, it's a page full of empty elements. We have the table uh with the with the results of our exams so the, the heading is this one uh, the body is empty so this is what we need uh, to fill uh, in on our client side and uh, also the footer is empty that we can uh, fill maybe with some statistics like the minimum score the maximum score the average or whatever we want uh, if we need to fill it okay right now it's an empty table uh, then i have a caption your scores and uh, i used uh, a bootstrap button which is the display in this case in the svg just to show this uh, uh, icon there okay you can you can also have an image or whatever you want so this is a button uh, it's uh, in um, in html it's a button element uh, that displays an image mm -hmm. so the, well, let's keep that that into uh, uh, consideration it's called add button and we will need that of course to attach uh, event handles to that mm -hmm. Uh, that concludes the the first part of the page the, the, the top half and then we have the uh, form hmm? uh, just for uh, being easier i didn't create a model i just uh, 
have a, a jumbotron element so the big box with a with a uh, colored background uh, that i will make uh, appear or disappear so it will al always be there but may be visible or invisible depending on what i need to do uh, and this uh, is basically a very simple form so most of the markup here is just to make uh, bootstrap happy uh, for uh, entering these forms uh, in uh, in uh, these three fields in a row so you see that the, the proportion are six uh, three and three for the um, um, uh, drop down menu uh, respectively the input uh, for the score and the input for the data we see that we are using html5 markup uh, for example the the exam score uh, is uh, from uh, is a number from 18 to 31 and it's what uh, automatically gives uh, the spinner in the page and also the data uh, gets automatically a calendar uh, because uh, i marked it up uh, as an as a date element and remember that date uh, is working on all the browsers date time is only working on some of them but at this point we don't need the time and uh, the drop down menu right now it's empty of course because uh, the, the, the static html page doesn't know uh, the list of the course hmm? uh, basically all the front end doesn't know the list of the courses at least until we make the first uh, uh, api call to the back end okay so that's for the for the front end i had the two buttons one save button and one cancel button uh, they are at the bottom uh, of the form so right now they do nothing uh, the only thing that is working is the validation because it's already automatic in the HTML uh, code okay so that's the, the pretty aesthetical page and we want to add uh, dynamic behavior to that hmm? and uh, with the with the JavaScript code of course and so uh, we should uh, first of all create uh, in the client directory always uh, our main file it's a main dot js okay where that my remember made js is included here at the top remember that it's a it's a module so it's actually um loaded at the end of the file hmm? modules are automatically deferred as a module okay so even if i write it in the head uh, it just imagine it will be loaded after the whole html has been already loaded hmm? and so in this uh, uh, main.js we may uh define all uh, our dynamic behavior for uh, for the page of course uh, everything uh, should be linked uh, uh, to the mm, to the uh, um, loading of the page hmm? so of course this way this will uh, basically uh, register an event handler for the load event so window is customers customary of registering head event listener on the load event and then what we can do is to register all the other uh, uh, actions that we need to do okay so uh, normally uh, we, we don't have anything to do except uh, uh, registering an event listener and only when the load event is fired uh, then we do all the real work okay and um, so what do we need to do um, basically is uh, on this uh, um, on this sorry on this html page hmm, is to first of all initialize this drop down list this is the most important thing that we need to do right now and also to fill the scores table hmm. so we have two actions to do once uh, the page is loaded so at this point the page is loaded so our javascript runs uh, and we want to populate this table and populate this drop down list hmm. um, well we can do that in either order as you like so populate score for example uh, oh yeah populate right, scores will fill the table with the actual course and uh, maybe we want to initialize the form the form uh, by uh, populating the uh, draw, um, drop down menu
okay these are the two uh, operations that we need to do upon the loading and these two are functions that i just define later on uh, in the page uh, so that they can keep uh, the the code more readable okay so i could put all the code here but i prefer to define them uh, as functions uh, as function for uh, initializing the forms and uh, um, populating the scores hmm? so uh, the easier one is uh, populating the scores hmm? function populate scores okay and uh, what do we need to do and our score i start also defining the other function so that i don't get any syntax error uh, initialize form hmm? okay populating the scores means uh, uh, getting all the exams from the back end hmm? so get exams from the back end through a rest api and uh, uh, then uh, update the table with the new content uh, so the um, second part is basically uh, mangling the dom uh, to to insert the information what is new for today is uh, uh, getting all the exams from the back end uh, rest not rest but rest with the t hmm? okay uh, getting all the exams from the back end means that we need uh, to call with a fetch uh, uh, command uh, we need to call uh, the, um, the 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 end point that we called exams so get slash exams yeah where we can get all the information so to maybe make the code also more modular I prefer to create uh, a new uh, file that I call api.js where I put all the API calls. Mm -hmm. So uh, here I put uh, uh, all the API calls uh, are stored here, are uh, de defined here. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, maybe we may have uh, uh get all exams mm, we may call it like that function get all exams uh, that will do the actual uh, call the rest api of uh, get exams mm. uh, and so here we we have uh, we insert the code um, this function we are inside um, uh, a module so we should uh, uh, make this function uh, available to to the rest function so function there's a typo here okay it should be available to uh, to the caller to the to the main.js and so what uh, i should do is to export export this function uh, get all exams hmm. so right now we have uh, we are defining a new module it's called api and uh, we are exporting from this module this function that we are going to uh, to implement so we are separating uh, the logic uh, of the application from the uh, details of the apis hmm. so that if the rest api will change we only need to change this api.js file and don't uh, touch the application code um, from the um, point of view of the um, of the api uh, we are oh, sorry the on um, the, the main we should uh, at this point call the method and for calling the method we need to import uh, the api from the main file mm -hmm. so uh, import all the functions uh, maybe uh, as api from the current file api.js remember that if i put a, a, a local path then it i'm loading from my own files if i don't put the local path i'm, I'm seeking into the node modules into the path 
into the search path so i don't want that hmm? so if i main my modules i can i can specify uh, the uh, the, um, the directory in which they are i'm calling api uh, the object that i, that I uh, that i import and uh, i'm importing everything that has been exported hmm? so right now there's no default uh, here i'm exporting three names they will be called api dot uh, i'm exporting one name sorry uh, uh they it will be called api dot get, get all exams hmm? otherwise i could just uh, uh, put the, the name here uh, but uh, right in this way it's more general so with this declaration with this import i can basically call the api dot get all exams functions function here and uh, uh, and then uh, use the information uh, from uh, all these exams uh, to populate the table um so maybe i call it const uh, exams uh, so that in this way i have a very clean uh, interface between the um, uh, the logic of the application and the api interface mm -hmm. so right now these exams will be an array mm -hmm and uh, an array of objects and these objects will be used to uh, to update the table and that will be the boring part of uh, uh, inserting the html hmm? uh, i I'm, uh, I'm saving you some time so i'm pasting the code here for the uh, table manipulation hmm? it's nothing new with compared to what uh, we already did in la in the past labs and just uh, uh, finding a reference to the t-body of the table and i'm uh, uh, deleting the old content and for each uh, exams dot for each so i'm uh, iterating over the exams uh, array and for each exam uh, i create a new row here by uh, uh, listing the course name the score and the date and uh, uh, this row will be inserted at the end of the table hmm? so it's nothing new we already did that uh, uh, many times in the in the exercises so that's why I, I save some time uh, the, so the, the the new part is uh, getting this uh, exam array hmm? exam uh, so it will be an array of objects um, okay so let's dig into the apis and uh, uh, get all exams is the method that we want to implement right now okay so basically what we have is that we need to fetch our api so the uh, get all get exams is a get so it's a very simple to use the fetch api we just need to specify the address and then we have the uh, sorry and, uh, uh, and we don't need uh, to specify any init object for the request because uh, uh, it's a simple get with no special uh, headers to be to be specified and this uh, uh, gives us uh, uh, cons response a response from the fetch hmm? just remember that response is a um, is a promise hmm? so we either uh, wait for the promise to be uh, specify what to do when the promise is uh, uh, fulfilled or we can await for uh, for its completion so basically since we don't have anything to do until this promise returns we can just await for it okay uh, and uh, so the response will be a promise that is uh, that will uh, pro uh, sorry the response object will be the result uh, fulfilled by the promise hmm? by the first promise uh, you see that the, the promise you see the, the definition here returns a promise containing an object of type response so this is our response object and we want to extract the json hmm? so again uh, our uh, response can be uh, unpacked into um, some exams object uh, so let's call it json exams json that we are we get by uh, extracting from the response the, uh, the json of the body again this is a promise the json function is a returns a promise mm -hmm. and so we want to await uh, for the completion of the promise mm -hmm. so 
um, the first uh, first we made the fetch and then we extract the the, the response at this point uh, we have the response object we check uh, if uh, it's okay then we can actually construct uh, our return value uh, and return uh, for example the exams json object uh, as uh, we can throw an exception that will uh, reject the promise uh, throw the for example the exam json that uh, should contain the, the reason of the error or an error message uh, well, maybe it's better to return an error message in get exams his response is not okay okay so this is uh, the minimum amount of work that we can do um, the only thing that a bit worries me is that we are I'm returning to the caller the exact object that I'm getting from the server uh, and, and it will be a, a normal object, uh, um, an object bound uh, whose prototype is bound to the object prototype. If we want to make uh, uh, our code a bit more object oriented, uh, we could also define an, an, ob uh, an, an exam object. For example, I created a very simple exam.js here, where defining a class exam that contains uh, uh, three parameters course code score the date uh, by the way the date from the json come will come up with a uh, as a as a, um, as a string uh, and so the constructor can easily uh, convert that uh, into into a, a date object for example or a moment uh, if you want to be more uh, more uh, to have a more robust code and so on so uh, it would be nice uh, in, in the API, not to return the normal JSON object, which is just a, an object with no prototype, but to return objects of type exam in this case. Hmm. How can we do that? Okay, but JSON only creates uh, normal objects, uh, but we could uh, uh, define a method like I defined here, uh, like a, a from method, a constructor, a factory method, uh, where the object, uh, the exam object, is able to construct itself from a normal object so the idea is that json is the object coming from the json which is just a, a null prototype it doesn't have any prototype or actually it has a default prototype object of prototype and i'm using a sign to create a new object of type exam and then uh, copy into this new object all the properties that are in this other object so this is a trick for creating a new object with the prototype that we want. So this one will be prototype linked to the exam class. And so this is the one way of lifting up to the, to the class and object representation what the JSON will only return as a normal object. You can do that or not as you prefer, but I just wanted to show you the example. And if, so if you want to do that, so I, I, I have this constructor that just be, returns a, an object that is identical to the, the parameter here, but is prototype linked to exam. This is the real difference. OK. Um, OK, so how to do that? Uh, we just need to, uh, to not return this object, but uh, remapping it. Uh, for example, exam.json, we map it, so we convert the array of objects, that is the response of the, of the JSON, we can map uh, uh, each exam coming from the JSON to a real exam object re constructed from this exam. And so we can return that. So it's only a map operation away uh, where we unpack the array coming from the JSON and uh, uh, for each of them uh, create a new exam object uh, that is actually the same is actually the same content and uh, but it's prototype linked to exam 
and since the mapper will return the array of these new created objects of course for doing that i need okay i imported the exam from exam this uh, was uh, automatically added by the editor while i was writing this hmm? uh, of course uh, exam.js will export the name or the name of the class hmm? so this is how we, we can work so uh, we put everything together so ideally this get all exams uh, uh, will uh, do the call and the main.js will get the result and put that into the table let's see if it's working so we reload the page hmm? and uh, we sorry this yeah uh, nothing is happening right now uh, in particular uh, because we forgot the nature of uh, uh, asynchronous calls uh, get all exams uh, is an asynchronous call so don't don't be surprised because right now this get uh, all exams uh, is uh, uh, being called here in, in a synchronous way hmm? but uh, uh, it's it contains asynchronous code it contains a synchronous call because it has these two awaits and so on. So remember that every function that contains a synchronous code should be defined as synchronous itself. Hmm? Uh, sorry, a sync function, not function sync. Should be declared as sync itself. And also at this point, the exam should uh, await for the return. Otherwise, we are uh, continuing with just the promise and not with the result of the promise itself. Hmm? And, uh, and we also remember that since we have the await here, uh, also the populate scores becomes an asynchronous function because await is only allowed inside a synchronous function. Okay. So uh, after all of this, we can try if it's working so i reload the page okay i see that it's working right now so maybe i should see that in the inspector so that i can see what happens in the at the network level uh, i reload the page so i'm okay so it's a bit longer uh, so i i ask for the um, root document this will uh, load the script main.js in the background is also loading all the bootstrap stuff and uh, main.js contains an import statement so you see that main is only loaded after the uh, the document is ready after the uh, window has been has been loaded okay uh, then as soon as i read uh, main.js afterwards i will load api through the import api will also uh, load exams to the import okay so it's, uh, this is the chain of imports uh, uh, loading the, the files from um, loading the modules from the files and uh, uh, right now after after all of this uh, we have the asynchronous calls we have to get for exams that ask for the uh, API and you see here to say that the type of request is a fetch and it returned a JSON object, okay? Uh, and this object is used then by the code and at this point the requests are finished and we are here uh, by, uh, and we can fill the table with the, uh, all, the, all the data that we received, okay? So that's the, uh, as we see the code for the fetch is quite simple. We get and we extract the data and if we want we can construct objects or or otherwise we can just be happy with the initial uh, exam um and uh, okay and uh, a call for the main uh, most of the complexity is of course in uh, managing the html uh, the dom of, of the admin so this is a part that also uh, react will help us in simplifying and so we can so we did the first part of populating the um the course uh, part and and then we should manage start managing the the module the, the form that we have uh, below 
first of all this form should be uh, hidden from from our view and we should uh, uh, just use the add button for uh, enabling its uh, uh, for enabling it to appear okay so in our uh, was that uh, the function was uh, initialize form we should some we should do very very basic uh, functionality first of all we should remember to uh, prevent a default action from the form okay uh, um, the, 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 because uh, we uh, we we never want uh, this this form to be really submitted hmm? <laughs> so we can uh, have give a name to this form const uh, for is our references uh, this form for example and uh, uh, seek it from the document we can use a query or simply remember that uh, document also forms collection and this forms contains uh, all the forms uh, uh, linked by um, identified by id or name so let's go back to the html and see how i call the form form id equal to actions so this is the form containing the actions so uh, form dot actions is a quick reference to our form so in this method i will just call it this form and uh, the first thing i need to do to this form is to disable it in a, in a way so first of all this form uh, this form uh, and uh, we need to modify the even listener for the submission hmm? so i don't want this form to be submitted so submit the submit event all the form that should normally reload the page should be inhibited so we should immediately event uh, prevent the default behavior hmm? event dot uh, pre prevent default so as soon as we capture the event uh, we disable it so we uh, we um, we prevent the browser for sub from submitting this form so we have the full control of this form remember because otherwise the first time you click on submit uh, the form will uh, issue a request and all your page will be reloaded okay this was easy and uh, uh, now we need to hide the form uh, by by default uh, and uh, show it only when we press the plus button here okay so what we want to do is this this part should be hidden by default and uh, only when the uh, add button is pressed uh, it should be displayed again so we should have a reference to this uh, uh, box here so we can inspect it uh, and we say that uh, this element here here is the add exam form it's called like that the jumbotron hmm? so we can uh, search for it document dot uh, uh, query selector the element that has the an id of uh, add uh, what was the name let's seek it for the index uh, add exam form it's not just the form but uh, it's all the box that contains it we should make it invisible so for example we may add uh, sorry, uh, a new class uh, uh, add invisible so the class list uh, is a way of with for the dom to expose all the classes attached to this element invisible is a bootstrap class uh, to make the element uh, as the name says invisible and so by default uh, hide the form let's check if it's working before doing anything else reload the page and the form is not visible anymore now we want to make it visible again when we press the plus button but this is all boring stuff that you already know so uh, make it visible with the plus button and uh, document dot query selector 
uh, the add button is uh, is uh, the is here it is button with the id which i called add button before so add button and uh, i need to modify what i do when i click add event listener when i click on the button and this button is outside the form okay and let's do something here and uh, basically we should uh, uh, make uh, the uh, form invisible uh, sorry visible again and the add button invisible so basically what we should do was, is to undo this uh, the exam form will become uh, remove invisible while the add button should become visible so or sorry it should become invisible so this one we should add invisible so it's just boring though manipulation hmm. if everything is right uh, when i click on plus oh, sorry let me reload the page when i click on plus the plus button disappears and the form appears okay and uh, the the reverse uh, so closing the form and re-showing the button should, could be done by save or by cancel mm -hmm. so we can manage uh, uh, the cancel button uh, let me copy that uh, from from somewhere else uh, where i already have this, this code ready uh, just not to make it uh, uh, to make it too boring okay Uh, so let format this the file because the indentation is not right okay so i'm doing uh, the the same when i click the cancel button so the cancel button i i, I can find it quite easily by uh, using this form dot elements uh, and when i click it uh, i will uh, add the invisible uh, to the um, to the exam form again and i remove the invisible from the add button so let's try it reload the page plus shows the form cancel remove the forms and show the button again so this is the, the easy part and then the the logic part of the of the of this form is uh, uh, handling the save button mm -hmm. so uh, handle so set event handler for save and submit to submit the new exam to the server so at this point we basically have to find the the save button elements dot uh, the name of the button is uh, i have it here save button add event listener on click click and then we have all the work to do of uh, um, of uh, uh, checking the form whether it's valid and uh, if we need uh, uh, if it's valid then we can insert uh, uh, the data through the API onto the server uh, so at this point uh, first of all we need to check if it's valid valid remember check validity is uh, is predefined and so if it's valid then uh, send the data to the server right now we just need uh, the validity uh, checks of HTML hmm? Uh, otherwise we could have uh, additional checks here for for checking additional data additional constraint uh, but um, at the moment uh, we we don't need uh, to do that because the only uh, real constraint that we have are minimum and maximum values and so on hmm? 
and uh, uh, okay uh, we can send the data to the server by calling uh, an, an API on the back end to, to do the post, uh, to insert the data actually. Uh, so again, we need to create a new API for inserting new exam. So for example, it would be an API dot insert new exam. And that will be done with, uh, uh, with an exam object uh, that we need to create, of course. So we need to pick, create a new object. From the data in the form. So this form. So the first uh, parameter of for creating new object uh, is the course code, like the documentation says. And so it's taken from the, uh, the select which is called course code. Hmm? I try to be consistent, sorry. This form dot uh, uh, course code dot value. I try to be consistent with the names. The second parameter of exam is the score. This form dot um, score should be the name of the, of the num numeric text. It's called, uh, sorry, here it's called exam score. Hmm? You should be careful. This form to exam score dot value. And third, we have the date. So this form dot and the name of the date element was exam date here. Dot value. This form dot exam date is the input control and value is the current value. So in creating an object with all the information that they want, and then I can uh, call the API for inserting the exam. Uh, when the exam is inserted, I, uh, I just need to remember to repopulate the table. So whenever I insert something, probably something new should appear here. So uh, in the, upon the successful completion, I could, uh, I should, again, uh, call the populate scores functions function okay so that I'm inserting a new exam and of course I'm doing uh, everything asynchronously so the inserting exam is an asynchronous function when we know this function is over then we can call populate scores that will will regenerate the table with the new uh, exams okay uh, this is basically the logic uh, of the of saving the, the button and of course we need uh, to implement uh, the uh, api for inserting a new exam in our in our api.js uh, uh, file so let's move to api.js and create another function or now we already know that should be an asynchronous function uh, we call it uh, uh, insert uh, new exam right insert new exam exam with the a open exam and this uh, the core of this uh, is, is to um, call the fetch uh, call a fetch method for issuing a post uh, a post operation and um, this post, uh, we we know we, we we need to know whether the post succeeded or not, uh, and to tell the main for that. So uh, we can uh, create. Uh, so basically, the core here is to fetch the the exams or URL again because we want to post. But this time we want to post. So for posting, we need to have uh, an init object in the, in, the, in the fetch API, where at least we should specify the method, which is post, should be post. Hmm? And uh, uh, of course, uh, we so go away. Mm. And uh, we should, uh, since we are sending uh, 
uh, an object uh, consisting of the exam, uh, we should specify that the headers uh, uh, should be specify the header of content type content slash type should be application JSON, like we saw in the slides, hmm? so that the server will understand that this is a JSON request. And finally, we may have the body uh, of our request, which is just the exam. Okay, so uh, J exam right now is an object, so we need I must convert it to a string with JSON dot stringy file of the exam. So this is the basic mechanism. Sorry, the basic mechanism for uh, for issuing a post request. I have this fetch. And uh, uh, now I can check the result of this fetch. Hmm? Um, what I want to do is to uh, enable the, the main uh, to be able to uh, act upon the result of this. So what I should do here is not just a, a processing the fetch, but uh, returning a promise uh, for which you know, you know that the, the main here is waiting for the XNU exam for populating the scores. If I didn't need uh, to, uh, to populate the scores, to update the page, well, it would be easier because we just, uh, we finished here. So the API is launched and when it finishes, it finishes uh, and the, update, the database will be updated. But I need to wait um, uh, until the completion of this. Okay, so the idea is that I should return a promise from this function and this promise will be fulfilled when the fetch is fulfilled. So I should wrap this fetch into a new promise uh, with the resolve uh, reject uh, parameters and so all this code will go inside here Yeah, like that. Uh, maybe there's some, some uh, okay, fetch method headers. This is the fetch clauses. Okay, there's one extra brace. Hmm. So when the everything is okay with the with the fetch, I will check. I have the response, and if everything is okay with the response. If response is okay, I can just uh, resolve the promise. Well, no, I don't need to return any specific result. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a promise that will be resolved here. I resolve the promise when uh, the fetch method completes. Okay. If the response is okay otherwise uh, i need to reject the promise for example else uh, else uh, i need to reject the promise uh, to reject uh, and uh, and uh, i need to let's uh, for a moment uh, well i could just uh, reject it in some way of course, I could have more information inside uh, the the response uh, that could give me uh, information. So in, maybe to do inspect the response to get cause of error. Hmm? But something that we, we can add later. Right now we have the basic mechanism. Okay. Right now we are in the main and we could uh, yes it should be okay to start testing this version okay so before testing we just have one 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 step uh, to 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 add because the uh, right now the sorry where well, this uh, this course uh, 
is not populated yet it's not filled so we cannot really submit uh, something okay and uh, the other uh, is that uh, we should remember that this insert new exam right now is only an internal function and we should export it otherwise it will be impossible to call but this is a detail the main part is that uh, the, we we still we still don't have uh, the uh, completion of the um, of the um, uh, select uh, drop down menu uh, i will not uh, spend too much time in this part here uh, so i will just uh, add the code that we already have ready for um, for filling the 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 part uh, here hmm. so it's something that we can do uh, here let me add this code just by pasting it uh, I preload the course name so we are all in this uh, function initialize form so initialize form I will prepare the form and uh, prepare all the event listener for the clicks uh, of the plus of save uh, of cancel and so on and I uh, preload uh, all the names uh, in the drop, drop down menu and again I just pasted that because it's identical to the code that we used to populate the table I'm waiting for a get all courses API, which is really identical to the get all uh, exams one. And once I have the courses, I can just uh, iterate through the courses here uh, and uh, append a new option to the menu. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the select HTML element contains many option uh, chi children that are identified by the name and the code uh, of the course. Um, which are the, uh, the the text as you say in the documentation here the text displayed by the button and the value returned by the value attribute so the value will be the code so our internal code and the name uh, is the displayed name of, of the element and of course for doing that we need to add to the api and again let me just uh, paste the, the working one uh, in order to save some time uh, the get all the courses which uh, you cannot imagine it's exactly the same as get all exams uh, here uh, and so I'm using also a course uh, object uh, that I'm mapping the, the, the JSON element from so it's exactly the same and I remember to export also get all courses let's check if i imported course at the beginning no so import course from courses course.js course .js. and at this point we can test it uh, and we should uh, after we paste that code we should just be able to reload the page and see that the yeah the list of courses has been loaded correctly in this uh, uh, drop down here so at this point we can also try to insert some new course and hope that it will appear hmm, in the in the window above so that's for the for the basic behavior okay so we have all the uh, already behavior that we know for uh, managing the dom interface uh, uh, for um, filling the forms and so on it's all the boring stuff uh, but whenever we need to interact uh, with the server we just uh, use uh, at least i suggest using uh, some functions in a in a library in a module uh, that uh, encapsulate the fetch responses and whenever the main needs to wait for the response uh, while well, it's better to return a promise uh, uh, explicitly or also implicitly like like the get all exams that uh, um, returns a, a promise from them and um, and all the let's say uh, details uh, are uh, all the connection details are handled directly by these apis uh, i also suggested to use some objects to contain the, the data and uh, to make it easier also for, for extending them or validating them uh, but uh, mo most uh, you see that most of the code also in this case is managing all the HTML events all the DOM events and so on mm -hmm. uh, while the interface with the server is quite uh, uh, it's quite quite small mm -hmm. uh, there's one last uh, detail that I didn't uh, implement in this version 
which is all the error, error handling so for example you just uh, have an error message message here and it said here i should uh, inspire the, for the cause of errors and so on and uh, um, there will be uh, say uh, also usually a very long part of the code the error handling uh, actually uh, what uh, i i will do is to be we, i will publish uh, a version of the code with uh, more error handling in a separate uh, uh, you know, separate commit uh, so you can also see the, the new version so I will commit this code to the repository so that you can check uh, what we did uh, together and then later on I will do a, a second commit uh, with uh, more error handling that you can try and look uh, and so you can also get inspiration in your code uh, from uh, how to handle some of the errors uh, that happen when we have this asynchronous communication uh, between the um, between the client uh, and the server mm -hmm. there's a lot of, of stuff that can go wrong uh, there's a lot of debug that we need to do either on the server or on the client uh, so it gets uh, uh, quite complex because uh, when we have also many events and many apis that are working uh, it's it's better to have the um, to separate uh, uh, three blocks uh, one is the server and we test the apis separately one is all the working on the user interface so for example like uh, what you did in, until lab, 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 laboratory number four with all the list uh, of tasks uh, it's already already working in html so you already sorted out uh, all the dom manipulations all the events and so on uh, and uh, a small part <coughs> with the data manipulation and the data manipulation if you encapsulate it well then you just have to replace that part uh, with an api uh, that will just defer and delegate this call to the server mm -hmm. so it's very important to keep these parts separate because each of them may have their own problems they may or may their own uh, implementation difficulties okay so that was just a, a small example and uh, uh, please check the code and please also check the code with the error end that they will uh, commit later and uh, there could be an inspiration or a basis uh, for uh, the last lab in this part uh, which will be next friday thank you and good evening